Welcome to a new episode in my Home Automation Open Heaven Node-RED series. Since I did my first video on IKEA's drop-free system, I think it was uh, due to create another video and, and see how it works with, uh, with Node-RED. And since that time, I think IKEA has also made some improvements to their system. So um, now it inter integrates with Philips Hue, so controlling uh, it from um, from a system um, other than the throat free is now available so maybe you know node red is not that important but still you know if you have node red you might want to use that system to also control your lights give it some other automation whether um, besides what uh, philips hue or the standard ikea app can do so that's what we are going to look at here and um, first of all i have um, a bit of a flow put together already but uh, let's see how we can get uh, all the requisites done before we we start working. So uh, to do the to to use Node-RED, we need a Node-RED. Sorry, uh, uh, to use Throat Free, we need uh, the uh, Throat Free node installed, and this is the Node-RED country Throat Free. So come here, search for Throat Free. You will see this line appearing, and you just click here, installed, and you get a few icons delivered. Um, sorry, yeah, um, so one is going to be the in, in the output section, the other one is going to be in the input section. Um, so the one, the output section is obviously is to control the lights and then the input section, uh, the, the function which are, works as an input and the output can be used for the same, but we'll see how they can be used uh, for different purposes. So first one, um, I put one of the, the output node here and then when you double click to go into the setup the first thing that you need to do is you need to configure your gateway so obviously you would you need to have a throat free gateway connected uh, on the same network where, where the, um, uh, uh, your node red let's say system or Raspberry Pi is sitting and the configuring it is, is really really easy because uh, you need to provide the IP address of the hub and the only way to find this out, well, the only way I could find out is that going into my router or having a uh, router or have, using another uh, program to look for all the uh, devices that are connected. So that's the local IP of my gateway. And that's the security code on the bottom of the gateway, which if you turn the unit or, uh, over, then there is a sticker on the back. Uh, it's actually on the, on the bottom and that's the security code. And then you need to um, add the co-op path and to this co-op client. And um, I hadn't, I didn't do anything to get this installed. So this was, uh, you know, more or less installed already. So I just added this one. So I just click on the first link. Sorry. Yeah. And um, and that's it. And. And that, that was all about it. So basically it's your IP address and your security code. And then you have your uh, gateway set up. And then once you have done this, then um, obviously you need to configure your lights or add your lights uh, to your uh, um, gateway. And when you click on the update button, you can get all the devices that the gateway has identified and add them here. Oh yeah, so the um, my gateway is no longer sitting on IP117, but it's on IP115. So I have just updated that and now it is working and I can see all the different items that are in my throat fee network. There are two ways of using the throat fee out node. Once you have done the uh, discovery of your devices, then you can select the particular device. So the message is going into this node will act on the device that you have selected here or you can uh, select this one by message.throatfree ID and using that option you will programmatically send in the ID of the device that you want to control so you can keep this node generic. We will see examples for both of that. So for the time being I'm using, um, I'm selecting my simple lamp. Um, oh yeah, so this one is using the uh, simple white uh, bulb and this the second one is using the white, spect white spectrum one and at the moment as you can see that both of them are turned off and if I use the remote they obviously come online so they are definitely connected and working so let's use the uh, the first option 
Oh, actually, I need to deploy because I have changed the IP address. Okay, so the the simplest thing to uh, well, the simplest way to control your lamp is sending a message, a text message, uh, on. And if you send it to uh, a node, a throat fee out node which has the particular bulb selected, then it will turn the lamp on. Nothing complicated that, uh, in that. And if you send off, then it turns the lamp off. So it works exactly the same way as the um, as the remote. And you can see the fade effect working as well. So it comes on slowly and then it goes off, uh, off slowly. So what if we want to change the colors? Because as I said, we are controlling the wide spectrum bulb here. So I can, you can send a message. It needs to be in a JSON format. And a, you are setting, within this JSON format, you are setting the attribute color. And you, are, you can set three different values in warm, normal, or cool. So the first one we will send in warm. And I will turn the color to warm. And the normal, turn it to the normal color. Or the cool, change it to the cool color. I don't have the um, the latest IKEA color changing bulb, but I'm guessing you can use the same attribute and send in the color version in uh, in uh, like a hex or RGB format. So like uh, hash, you know, FF0000 would be you know a full red light or something like that. But um, unfortunately, you have to experiment that for yourself. So that's the way to control the 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 color of the light. If you send the same message into the um, the bulb, which doesn't, which is not a wide spectrum one, then it's just going to ignore it. It's going to have no effect. And you notice that by changing the colors, the change is immediate. So there is no fade in and out between the different states. Changing the brightness is similar to color. You have a brightness attribute, and you can send in a value between zero and two two five five. So if I do. 255 then nothing happens because it's already on full brightness let me change back to normal if i sense 50 then it becomes quite dim and 255 brings it back to the same uh, brightness what it was before and of course you're not limited to just setting the color or the brightness at, at one time you can send in things like brightness is 100 the color is warm or the other one is brightness 255 and the color is cool and if you execute that, you, we get a dimmer warm light or a full cool light. And if you turn some, if you turn the lamp off and you send one of these ones, which control a brightness one, then it brings the, turns the light, lamp on and sets it to a particular brightness. But what you would notice that whenever you are using the brightness uh, functions, then the change becomes immediate, so there is again no feed, so fade in between the uh, the previous value and the new value. So the the only time you are getting the nice fade effect um, via these nodes is whenever you are using the on and off. So controlling it is well, it, I mean it looks really really simple. I mean it's just a, lo a little bit of wiring because you have to control, you have to create a node for every single lamp or just remember it doesn't have to be a uh, doesn't have to be a lamp it can be a group so you're controlling an entire sorry this one uh okay it's not showing it anymore so it, it doesn't have to be it can be a group so you can control your entire room at the same time but i just wanted to show how to do it individually the other thing is uh, the other use of the throat free get, so the, the other node, which is the throat free in node, is you don't configure anything again, you just set the gateway, is you can send in a message which is containing a simple string of A, uh, which is um, some sort of message for discovery, and the information you're getting back is, is going to be in an object. So first of all, you you get an object which has an ID and a name, and within the uh, name you get the throat free group, and um, that's the name of my group which doesn't have any name, so this would be like, you know, kitchen or living room or study. And then within that you can see that you have three devices, oh and by the way, your room also has an on state, which is a false at the moment. And if I turn the lamps on with my remote, and if I do the discovery again, then you see that it's uh, now true. 
For some reason, the brightness remains zero, but uh, let's just ignore that for the time being. So going back to the devices, we have three devices, and we have a remote control, um, and we have the first bulb, and we have the second bulb. You can see each of them contains an ID, which starts from two, uh, 65536, I think, um, and, and, then just, and it just goes up. And that's the ID that you can use a, in in the node when you are not controlling a particular lamp or a particular device, but you're controlling by the message of throw three ID. Again, we will see examples of that later. So normal lamp, you can see that the, uh, so all both of the lamps are on at the moment. They have a brightness of actually not 255 by 254. Uh, so that's probably the maximum value. So anything higher than that, than that get just, you know, trimmed down to 254. And because I have a wide spectrum one, I can see the color here as well. And oh, sorry, this is the this is the type of color value that I was uh, referring before. And I've said incorrectly that it starts with a hash, so there's no hash. It's just the three red, green, blue values in hex. So that's probably the value, uh, the hex value for this. Uh, what is a normal color? I think it's normal at the moment, but maybe it's uh, it's the cool light. And yeah, both of them are on. And again, if I use the remote to bring the brightness down, if I do another discovery, and again, expand. Yeah, we can see that the brightness is now about 48, sorry, uh, for, uh, 78. And um, so that is a really, really useful way of um, basically discovering your network. So if you would get, if you have another type of lamp or another type of device. For example, I don't have a motion sensor, but maybe if you have a motion sensor, then you can use this um, discovery to see what the what the throat free gateway um, gives you about the like the motion sensor or the full color bulb, which I, again, I don't have at the moment. So just keep this in mind. You need to send in an A to get this information out. Okay. And, and that's why I'm going to use it here. So as you can see, um, uh, both of the lamb, so both of the bulbs have this in node, which I'm going to use in codes later on, and also this uh, generic node, which is uh, controlling the lamp ID IDs, have a generic in node, which I'm going to use. If you want to trigger your lights uh, from another source, it's not by you know something like this, which an inject node. Uh, oops. Sorry here. Yeah, you can or you can you, uh, you can just put in like a change node, uh, which change the message uh, payload to on or off, and you can use any message to turn your lamps off. So this one turns off my one of my lamp and then turns the other one on. And again, I'm just using the in node in this in and out node uh, to make the um, the flow a little bit neater, so I don't have you know hundreds of wires going. All the way up to the top for for this node. Uh, of course, I have could have created multiples of these, but I just wanted to keep it neat that way. That I only have each of my devices are only represented once in the top, and I then the other part of the flow is referencing to them using these in and outs. Okay, and if you have um, another way, uh, for example, if this would be an MQTT, uh, if you have an MQTT node. Um, and that MQTT is sending in zero ones, which then ones uh, need to control lamps. Again, you can use a switch node and again change nodes to turn those uh, zeros and ones into um, ons and off, and again control your lamps that way. And the same uh, goes for other things like the brightness. So I can have a timestamp. Um, you know, whatever node which is sending in whatever message. I mean, in this case, I have an inject which is sending in a sending in a timestamp, and then again in the set node, I am converting. I'm basically overwriting the payload with a JSON format, which is the same format what we have seen uh, in the top in the inject nodes. So that would, you know, set the brightness to 255, so the maximum brightness. And again, you can see that one of the lamps is now on full brightness, the other one is still on the lower brightness. Okay. And in the next few flows, I'm going to use the um, the in and out nodes. So 
first of all, I uh, I want to show a method of turning all the lights off. Um, of course, I can do it with the remote with one group, but the way this code works is it's basically going to sweep across all your um, throat free devices. And if, if any of them is on, it's going to turn it off. So it will send out a message which turns it off. So um, first I send by uh, sending in a discovery message to the in node, and then I'm just going to process the output and then send a turn off signal for every single light. So if I do this, all my lights nicely go off. So the, the A message will send, um, uh, will make this node to send out the status of, of my throat fee network. And in this code, I am just looping through the groups because as we can see, let me just run this again. So going back here, yeah, so first of all, I go, I loop through the uh, the message payload, which is an array, and because I have only one group, uh, it's just one group, so it, it loops through all of your groups, which would be, let's say, your rooms, and then within each of the group, it loops through all of the, uh, the devices. So um, here, you see that now we are going through the, pay, uh, the devices object, which is again an array, and in my case, I have three devices. And uh, um, I couldn't find a way uh, to, to differentiate whether a device is a bulb or a remote or something like that. But well, what I could notice based on the devices I have that um, each of the devices have a name and, and, and they have a type. So because I haven't renamed my devices, they, the, both of them are the same. But, uh, but essentially, each any, anything which is a bulb in my setup has the, the the word bulb within the type so that's what i'm using here because i don't want to send a message to the remote and the bulb as well so first of all i'm checking if i have the word bulb within the device type and if i do then i create a message which says the drop um, i just put it a, a topic and within the payload i'm sending in the throat free id uh, which i get from here so these are the ids and I, I, what I've noticed that I also need to send in uh, the type as well because otherwise it's, the message will get ignored by the gateway so nothing really happens and I'm just sending the message state equals off or state colon off and I'm collecting all these messages in, in an array so this will actually send out one message for each of the lamps that needs to be turned off well actually it, it will try to turn off anything which is about type and this information goes into the this special node where the device is controlled by the throat free underscore id which again comes from here which we get from here so simple as that and i can again turn all my lights on and all my lights will come on and if i had if i would have multiple groups it would just all of them would just light up and i can have this twilight mode which again is going to dim all my lights. So now all my lights are, I think, probably 50%, uh, yeah, no, brightness 100, so about 50%, so less than 50%. Um, and I'm also sending a state on, so if anything is off, it's going to turn it on. Oh, actually, and there is one more modification in this code. So what I have done here is I've I've said that if my device is on, then it's going to dim it. So let me create a setup where I turn every oh I turn everything on at full power. I'm just using my remote, and I turn one of my light off, and then I, I send this dim program. And it's only going to dim the one the reason this happens because i have this uh, uh, second uh, well this uh, additional if statement here which will only send out a message for a bar which is already on so whatever is off is not going to, to come on uh, at you know brightness 100 because that's not what i wanted and um, and again from one single um, node i can also use uh, send out multiple uh, outputs so let's say I just send I have whatever uh, message coming in or whatever yeah message coming in this time a time uh, timestamp and 
I'm going to set one of the lights to full uh, bright, uh, sorry, full brightness and color warm, and uh, you know, somewhat low brightness and the color glow. If I do this, you can see the, the result here. The other thing I wanted to experiment with is something where the the light um, or the bulb actually follows some sort of pattern of um, not not exactly blinking but different states of brightness and that's what I started to do here so uh, the bulb will go full brightness and half brightness and full brightness and eventually turn off and there would be a delay of one second between each of them and um, it kind of works and as you can see now you know the one of my blood was blinking I wanted to simulate the same as uh, you know when you pair the device it just pulses but um, um, as you have seen previously when you do when you have a brightness uh, command that it makes an immediate impact instead of a fading so to make it really nice and smooth I could have made this a lot more complicated but I just wanted to have something like this and you can have it like um, you can have this type of flow set up for you know some sort of lamp in your study or whatever and then whenever there is an event in node red you can just trigger this so you would your lamp would come on and it would pulse and you would know that something has happened like maybe you got an email or something in the next few examples i wanted to replicate some of the functionality which is already available in either the throat free app or something similar in the philips hue app but it just shows you what you can do with um uh, node red as well so the first thing is um, and it's mostly about timers and then time related events happening in uh, um, in node red uh, that would you know make your lights go on and off and the first one which i actually really liked i think it was in the trope free but maybe it's in philips U as well is this wake up light which slowly increases the brightness of a lamp um, to wake you up and the way i did it is um, I'm using big timer for most of these timer things because uh, the the configuration um, the versatility is is uh, is quite quite nice and uh, uh, what I did here is I set up an on time of six o'clock and an off time of six uh, seven thirty and the on message is start and the off message is off so basically at six o'clock it will start. Um, bringing the, uh, the the brightness of one particular lamp up slowly and then at 730 it was to turn it off and the way I did it is that the big timer sends the on and off message uh, at those specific times and then you also have this time check functionality which sends in a message with a topic interval and sorry um, with, a, with a topic of time check and a this function node, whenever it re uh, receives an, uh, the start message um, from the big timer, then it knows that it needs to start a cycle. And then whenever it receives one of these uh, time check message, then it knows that it's time to increase the brightness by, let's say, one. Um, so the way to control the, the speed of the effect or the speed of the fade is using this time check. And the moment is set to what, every one second. And um, um, and within the code, as you can see, I'm not going to go through the entire code, but um, 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 in the code here, I'm increasing the counter function and I'm calculating the, uh, the actual brightness by counter divided by 30 times 255. So it's basically, it's going to take 30 counts to come to full, full brightness. And um, I just created these four inject nodes uh, because there are several states of the um, of the big timer. So you can have it set to auto and manual, and um, you can also have test uh, cases where, irrespective of the timer, uh, the on time and the off time, you can you can make this uh, the big timer to send the, uh, the well the initial message and the last message out. So if I start, uh, set, set it to on, then the actual counter cycle now starts. So we can see that the, um, uh, the state is true. So it's sending out on messages. And then the counter is now coming to 10, 12. And you can see that the, the, 
the lamp on the right is getting brighter and brighter. And of course, if I send it to off, then it's going to turn off. Um, well, just for testing purposes, I set it to one second, but you can set it to one minute and then it will be a really, really nice fade, which, you know, comes to full brightness, maybe in like half an hour. I don't really know what the best time is for this kind of applications because I, I don't have any of these wake up lights. I haven't used any of them. The next one is an away time, which again works, uh, uses the big timer. So here you would set that you want, um, uh, and away we starts at eight o'clock and then it it um, it finishes at, at three o'clock in the afternoon so let's say uh, and yeah I so that would be on weekdays every month of the year so basically like you know every working day you would leave home at eight o'clock and then probably come back at three and um, again uh, I'm only using the on timer here, so that's basically just to turn all your lights off at 8 o'clock no matter what happens. So at 8 o'clock it will send an off message and I have a switch just to make sure that I'm receiving an off message and then I have a payload off, which in this case it goes away to, well it can go away to one single lamp, but it can be, you know, a group of lamps or you can just uh, wire it up to every single lamp and then it will just turn them off automatically. The garden lights is uh, is an even simpler uh, solution because again we are using the uh, the big timer but instead of setting a specific time we can say that I want the on time to happen 20 minutes before dusk and then the off time to happen at uh, 11 o'clock. So basically when the sun goes down your garden lights will come up and then at 11 o'clock they will all turn off. And here we are not going to use anything between the big timer but we are sending the um, the messages out from Big Timer immediately into the bulbs, and we can do this by making asking the Big Timer to spend to send out the specific messages that the um, and the Trolled Free system is listening to. So, obviously, on for turning on and off for turning off. And again, in the same example, you will link these to the to the uh, to the bulbs that you want to uh, control. So again, if I do this. And deploy. If I have a test on, everything comes on. Well, these two come on, and then at off, these two come off. So really simple. You don't really have to do much. And and again, these examples don't need any programming at all. And the last one is um, uh, is a little bit more complicated, and I don't really want to explain the code, um, but. It really sad. I mean, it's, it's not awfully complicated at all. Um, what is happening here is you have again this burger light, which is basically cycling some of your lights randomly. Uh, so again, you said that you want this whole thing to start 60, well, let's say 60 minutes after dusk, and then again uh, finish at 11 o'clock. Let's say that's when you go home, or so you go to bed and you know turn your lights off. We start with a start message and we end with the end message. And what is happening here is that we have two live. Um, in this case, I have just two lamps here. But first, we turn the lamp on. We wait for a random amount of delay between 15 and 20 minutes. And then we turn that light off to that very uh, same uh, uh, light off. And then we turn another one on. And then we again wait for a random 15 to 20 minutes and then, then turn it turn that one off and then start the whole cycle again. So the only reason I needed all these extra nodes and all the uh, additional wiring because um, I just had to make sure that if I send out a stop signal, this loop doesn't um, you know, start continuing forever and forever. But um, basically that's all that happens. So you need these groups, well actually, let me just move this further down. So these groups of nodes are responsible for the first bulb and these group of nodes, sorry, these ones are responsible for the second bulb. Again, if you would have three or four bulbs, you need to copy these groups further here and just make sure that the turn off from the last one goes into the function node of the second one. And of course, the, the turn off of the last one goes into the function of the first one. So it completes a cycle. 
Mm, simple as that. Again, hardly any. Well, if you use my example, you can ignore the code, whatever is here, because it's it's uh, it's very generic. Um, and just by copying this node, it's going to work. But just by copying these groups here, this group of uh, what is it? Six nodes. You can make this program to um, include you know any number of lights in in your setup. And again, you can even keep uh, changing changing these random values to make the light show even more random than you know what this uh, random delay already offers. And the last thing I wanted to show is um, up until now I was working with individual bulbs or. We yeah, are mostly individual bulbs, um, like controlling them individually uh, by selecting them in the throw three out, or by controlling them using the message uh, underscore, sorry, message dot throw three underscore ID field. But um, in this example, I have actually instead of uh, creating, uh, instead of selecting the individual bulb, I have selected a group which would be like a room or something. So, and if I do this, I can issue the exact same comments which I have done in the previous uh, in the past. So I can um, send the on and off uh, command, which then would apply to both of these bulbs, which are in the same group. Or I can do the warm and the normal and the cool, which will make the colors to change. And of course, I can control the brightness as well. So this is full brightness, and this is now of uh, brightness fifty. So the exact same messages that are can go out to bulbs can go out to groups as well, and they will control the bulbs exactly. Well, they will control all the bulbs in that group exactly the same way as they control them individually. I hope you find this video useful. The link to this no dread throw is in the video description. Thanks for watching, and hopefully see you in the next video.